called what you say. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Okay, so my main concern is I have a, mm -hmm. I have many questions actually. I've tried to read the Quran, but mm -hmm. um, I haven't read a lot of it. But I've read some verses and I'm not really okay with them. Okay, so first things first. Can I ask you a question before you do that? Are you yes, religious yes. yourself? Do you believe in a creator? I do. I do believe in a okay. creator. I just are you Christian? I'm agnostic. Uh, I'm sorry. Agnostic. You're not Christian. Yeah. You're agnostic. No, no, I'm not Christian. Actually, okay. Where are you from? Origin? I'm from Tunisia. From Tunisia. Tunisia. Oh, that's what I thought. So I okay, that yeah. makes sense now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because the way you said the Quran, I caught that you are saying it no, in an Arabic, Arabic way. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I know, I know, I know. Go ahead. Okay. Tell me the problem with the, with the Quran potato. Go ahead. My problem. <laughs> my problem is yes. if we have no free will. Uh, okay. and everything is predestined, then why okay. some of us are gonna burn in hell and some of us are gonna go to heaven? If every, if like we are born and God already knows who are gonna burn in hell and who are gonna go to heaven, what what is the point of life? Even, isn't it kind of like just a game? Like, isn't it pointless? Like, okay, the question I would ask is, where does the Quran say we don't have free will? I mean, it says like everything is predestined. It says like the big steps in your life are already set for you. Like, uh, for example, it says... Yes, yes, uh, I agree. I agree that it does say things are predestined. That's true. But does it say you don't have a will to choose, which is the assumption of your question? Do you have the Quran in front of you? Uh, no, but... I, okay, I, I so... have a copy. You do have a copy. So I want to yeah. give you a verse to read and then and then so you understand a bit more. OK, so mm -hmm. uh, can you go to chapter 16 of the Quran, verse 106, if you can search it up or you, get, you want to get oh, check chapter on your phone. Yeah. OK, chapter, chapter 16, 16 of the Quran yeah. or start from 105, 105 and then we, we do the next one. So, so verse 105. Yes. You speak Arabic, so it should be easier, isn't it? Uh, um, I kind of suck, suck at it, so I like read the Arabic, um, the verses in Arabic, and then I translate it to English, and then I translate it again to Arabic to understand the meaning. You don't have to even translate it, but the important thing is to understand it. Just, uh, that's the important thing. Wait, okay. So, uh, wait. Uh -huh. so, yes. Okay. Um, should, I, should, uh, should I read it in Arabic or English? Can you read the Quran well or? No. Okay. I, I should just oh. read it in English. Yeah, read it in English. That's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. So it says, no one fabricates lies except those who disbelieve in Allah's revelations. And it is they who are the true liars. Okay. Next one. one. Next one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's all in Arabic now. I don't know. Okay. So it... <laughs> It's all right. Okay. It says, "Man kafara billahi ba'da imanihi illa man ukriha wa qalbuhu mutma'innun bil iman." So, this is what it says. Yeah. So then it goes on to talk about someone who disbelieves on Allah and the exception of someone who's forced to disbelieve in Allah. Then the next verse says, "Wa dhalika bi annahu mustahabbu al-hayat al-dunya 'ala al-akhirati wa anna Allah la yahdi al-qawm al-kafirin." So this verse here is talking about guidance, hidayah, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is what what you say is the predestined and all of that. Allah yeah. says Allah does not guide those who istahabbu al-hayat al-dunya 'ala al-akhirah. Where is the is the action in this verse? Is it attributed to Allah or attributed to the people? Yes, it's attributed to the people, but God okay. is all Okay, no, before but, before, yeah. before but, I want to just make a point, right? Allah attributes yeah. the istihbab, which is yeah. loving this worldly life over the afterlife to the people. So yeah. Allah says that this is a, a decision they made. If it was that Allah Azzawajal forced them to do that, it would not make any sense for Allah to attribute the action to them because they did not choose it. So the fact that Allah attributes it to them, and then he said yeah. he doesn't guide the disbelieving people, is the reason he doesn't guide the disbelieving people because they chose this belief by loving this worldly life over the afterlife. And then when you go to the next verse, it even cl clarifies it even more. It says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ طَبَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ The ones that choose this life over the afterlife are the ones that Allah sealed their heart and their eyes when you're reading these verses in the Quran but and you think... Why? Sorry? But why does he do it? I mean, why, why would God not help them no, uh, right. Allah Azza wa Jal got, uh, does not misguide them until they choose misguidance first, right? If you go to, for example, Surah Al-Saf, right? Allah, uh, mm -hmm. verse 5. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَيَقَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ لِمَا تُؤْذُونَنِي وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ Musa, mm -hmm. Musa alayhi salam, he said to his people, Oh my people, why do you harm me? And you know I'm the messenger of God to you. So first he's mm -hmm. establishing there that they know that he's the messenger of God. So it's not like they, 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 they don't know who that person is. So they are going against him even though they know he's the messenger of God. And then he said, Allah says, 
Allahu azar Allah qulubah. When they chose misguidance, when they deviated, Allah deviated their hearts. So it's Allah's action of misguidance or predestination always follows the choice of the individual. Okay, so they're linked. Mm -hmm. If you choose misguidance, then Allah will misguide you. If you choose this life over the afterlife, then Allah will see your, your heart. So it's all coming back to your choice. They're the ones who chose to be deviated. Then Allah deviated their hearts. Allah is, does not misguide someone who does not deserve to be misguided because Allah says in the Quran that Inna Allah, la Allah does not do injustice mm -hmm. the weight of an atom. So this is the answer to, to the question that you make. You had an assumption that Allah uh, forces people to be misguided. The Quran goes against your assumption because it clearly says that Allah gives the people a chance and Allah, they choose misguidance. And after they choose misguidance, Allah seals their heart. I honestly still don't understand because like from what I know, like uh, God already knows who you're going to marry, what career you're going to choose, how you're going to die and where you're going to live, true, everything you're going to do. Like, True. like, why, what is the only thing left to you is whether, whether you believe or not. And like, no, uh, but God what, knows if you, if you believe or not as well. Um, yeah, he, exactly. He knows. So okay, basically, so, so, so that's not an exception. It's just a game. The word is just a game. No, like, no, no. What no you're meaning. missing, no, no, what you're missing is the, is the following. You do not know. Do yeah, you know what's going to happen to you? Yeah. So I when you know. behave, and, but that's but that's the 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 important thing. That's the most important thing because you do not know when you do something. You base it on your own judgment with the limited knowledge that you have. So you froze yeah. for a bit, yeah. So you base it on your limited knowledge. So you're making a free choice because you do not know what is going to happen in the future. Allah knows, but Allah knows is irrelevant because it's not Allah that is making the choice on your behalf. You're making the choice. So whether Allah knows or not, it does not change the fact that you do not know. And because you do not know, when you're making the choice in the moment, it's a completely free choice in that sense. Okay, I see where you're coming from. Okay. But yeah, and that's that's what Allah says in the Quran, by the way. Yeah. That's what Allah says in okay. the Quran. They say Allah says that that when when they they use the excuse people use the excuse the excuse uh if allah willed we would not have this belief or our forefathers yeah, exactly. before us yeah. Allahu ma ashrakna. We, we did not believe uh, we did not disbelieve if allah will then allah says that Hal min ilmin lana. do you have this evidence of the knowledge that you know you're going to be misguided so you can show us this evidence that Allah has said you're going to be misguided. No, you do not have the evidence for the claim you're making. You're choosing misguidance right now because you do not know where you're going to end up. So the choices that you're making is based, it's completely your choice, has nothing to do with what God knows or he doesn't know. Yeah, true. Okay, so next question. Um, like uh, also, uh, mm -hmm. God made hell to be filled with disbelievers, right? Isn't that a bit weird, like to... No, God, no, God did not make hell for that reason. No. No. This okay, yeah. يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلْ امْتَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ. This is a statement of a question that will be in the future. But where does Allah say in the verse جَعَلْنَا جَهَنَّمَ لِتُمْلَأَ بِالْكَافِرِينَ, which is what you're trying to say in a sense, right? Allah doesn't say that. Allah says a fact that Allah will ask Jahannam on the day of judgment, are you full or not yet? And then Jahannam will ask, is there is there more people to be put in hellfire? Why did Allah make hellfire? Allah made hellfire for the people who will choose to go to hellfire by disbelieving in Allah. So Allah did not make hellfire so he can necessarily force some people inside there to burn. No, Allah made hellfire for the people who deserve to be punished, for the people who will be unjust in this life, for the people who will do evil to other individuals, for the people who will mm -hmm. do things in this life in which they can maybe get away with them in this life. Mm -hmm. Hellfire will balance out that scale. So those sure. people will be punished for the things that they did in this life. And for example, you see someone who's, who's an evil person who goes to the park and then he does things with little children. Where do you think that person should go? And no one caught yeah, him I all his life. Agree. I totally agree. Like those people should be put in hand but like i, I still okay. don't think like people who just live their life not hurting anyone just like having a sip of alcohol once in a while should be burned to hell I, okay yeah now, now now it's a different question okay so we answered first the question of the idea that hell is yeah. is it makes sense because it's for the people who do evil right now the idea of people who don't drink alcohol or this or that you do not go to eternal hellfire for drinking alcohol. Isn't that like one of the seven most prohibited things? Most yeah, things? It's a sin. It's a sin. But it does not. Yeah. Allah doesn't say that you go to hellfire forever for drinking alcohol. The only sin that keeps someone in eternal hellfire is disbelieving in Allah or associating partners with him. Kufr or shirk. Okay. These are the two only it sins that can allow someone to be in eternal hellfire. 
And why? Because they denied the maker of the universe. They deny the one who made them, who gave them all the blessings that they have, who gave them everyone around them, who provides for them on a daily basis, even though they disbelieve in him, who literally is the one who allowed them to breathe air. When they go to sleep, their heart keeps pumping because he created them with that heart. The eyesight that they have, that they choose to, dis- to disobey him with, they den- to deny his existence with, he gave it to them. Those are the people who spend eternality in hellfire because they made the biggest, biggest sin, which is to completely deny the existence of the creator as if he's not there. And still Allah lives, leads, leaves them in this life until they die, they have a chance to, co- to come back. So yeah, true. drinking alcohol is a sin, but there is repentance. And if you don't repent, you can be punished for a while, but you don't, you're not punished forever in hellfire. The only thing that allows you to be punished forever in hellfire is kufr and shirk. Okay, I see. Thank you. Um, also, like I said, like in the comments about the torture scenes in the in the Quran, and okay, yeah, uh, like yes. uh, okay, I wrote some down. I hope I don't butcher this because I, I know them. Very... But go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Did okay, you ch- so ch- I, start with I, chapter four? Which one are you starting with? Chapter four? I I don't know. I don't know the Eighty? chapters, but I, it's okay. Called tell me the verse. Mazmal, ayah thirty-one. Muzammil. 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 I told you my okay. Arabic is bad. No, it's, that's why I asked you in the beginning. It's fine. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, okay. So, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, it's not. It's nothing to do with the torture weight. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. This one. Um, I don't know. The, this one was about guidance and misguidance. We already dealt with it anyways, but yeah. Yeah, we already covered that. Uh, yes. Okay, so this one. Sa'uslihu saqran wa ma adraka ma saqran. Sa'uslihu saqran wa ma adraka ma saqran. Surat al-Muddathir, yeah? La tabqa wa la... La tabqi wa la tadhar. La wadhatu lil bashar. Alayha tis'at ashar. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Like, uh, okay. isn't that... Sa'uslihu... Who is that person? Yeah, yeah. Who is that person that Allah says sa'uslihu saqran? Yeah, to the to the disbelievers, obviously. No, no, there's a specific person. I don't know. I, I yeah, don't that's why. That's why. That's why. That's why you cannot take the Quran out of context, right? Uh, yeah. Allah Azza wa Jal, he's, he's speaking about a specific person who, mm-hmm. after knowing that Allah Azza, uh, the Prophet Muhammad is the Messenger of God, and knowing that the Quran is the truth, he chose to disbelieve. And he chose to dis- disobey Allah Azza wa Jal specifically. If you read Surah Al-Muddathir from the beginning, you will see that Allah Azza wa Jal is speaking about that individual, right? فَذَرْنِي وَمَنْ خَلَقْتُ وَحِيدًا I'm just trying to st- read from the beginning to reach the part where I want, yeah? فَذَرْنِي وَمَنْ خَلَقْتُ وَحِيدًا وَجَعَلْتُ لَهُ مَالًا مَمْدُودًا وَبَنِينَ شُهُودًا وَمَهَدْتُ لَهُ تَمْهِيدًا ثُمَّ يَطْمَعُ أَنْ أَزِيد سأرهقه صعودا إنه فكر فقدر فقتل كيف قدر ثم قتل كيف قدر ثم نظر ثم عبس وبسر ثم أدبر واستكبر so Allah is all of that is talking about a specific individual right it was called Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira by the way so this verse is revealed specifically about that specific individual you cannot then completely apply to every disbeliever on earth okay yeah, yeah, what so, else yeah um, for the torture first actually that's it but like I watched this video of I don't know if you know him. He's a um, he's an Egyptian guy who uh, makes videos about why Islam is not the truth and why the Prophet is. Um, I didn't I hear the name, the but but, but there are many people like it's, him. Actually, yeah. Actually, I used to. I, I didn't used to have this many doubts, but like since I started watching him, like he mm-hmm. he really like. Actually, he's the one who introduced me to the to the verse about. Uh, you know, Surah al uh, about the women who cheat on their husbands, they must be like uh, beaten and left at home until God doesn't say that. finds a solution. <laughs> it, it does. It doesn't say it. it does. Does. Oh, look, it look, does. sister. Okay, yeah. sister, we, we, we start with, uh, look, look, we start a bit by bit, right? And then we come okay. to the to the point that we, what we want, right? First, we, we let's agree, we, I've dealt with the arguments that you brought before I know, do you agree I'm no i'm asking i'm yeah. making sure that you're satisfied okay with the with the answers okay now going to this idea of 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 uh, i know i know where it is exactly you don't need to search i'll, I'll help you it's in, in chapter 4 of the quran verse 34 okay mm-hmm. go there you'll find the verse i can tell you the verse from the beginning to end so when i tell you it's not the way you said it that's the point i'm making so the verse mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. so allah established something which is called qawama i.e that the man has a leadership in the relationship and the family structure traditional 
family structure of a man and a woman. There has to be someone in charge, either the man or the woman. Islam puts the in charge for the, for the man for two reasons. It says, Allah gave them over women. For example, the physical strength, their, their protective nature, the fact that they do not go through menstruation and then which can affect their judgment or emotions, all of these type of things. You can open any tafsir which will talk about that. So that's the first reason. The second reason is with the money that they are providing for that woman because in an in an islamic relationship the man is the one i'm sure you already know that very well the man is the one who provides he pays the mahr he provides the housing he provides the, everything from a, a financial point of view so because he's got this responsibility naturally when you got responsibility it equals authority because mm -hmm. if you have responsibility with no authority that's what slavery is you put responsibility on a slave and he's got no authority that's what slavery is so whenever there is responsibility there has to be authority equal to that responsibility so that's the beginning of the verse okay then allah azzajal says so Allah says the righteous women, they're qanitat, they pray in the night, they, they're close to their creator, to their Lord, they obey Allah Azza wa Hafidatun, they, they preserve their private parts, they don't cheat behind their husbands. Yeah. So Allah first gave yeah. the example of a righteous woman. So, so far we've got no issues. Then now we go into a disobedient woman. So here now we've got steps for a specific type of woman. First, this verse in the Quran is not saying about all wives. It's talking about a woman that starts problems and becomes disobedient in things which are the rights of the husband. So in Islam, there's rights, things which are the rights of the husband. So the woman has certain rights she needs to fulfill to the husband and the husband has certain rights he needs to fulfill to the wife. So both of them can become nashes. Both of them can become disobedient from that sense. Allah also in the Quran, in the same surah, he's speaks about the man. If he does no shoes, what does the woman does? So it's not only the woman. So a man can leave his rights and a woman can leave her rights. So Allah says, then this is disobedient woman. How do you deal with her? What does Allah say in, in, in the first thing? He says, فَعِذُوهُن. What does yeah. mean? Give them advice, right? Mm -hmm. Speak to them nicely. Advise them nicely. And Allah says, fa and al here is for tertib. Yeah? yeah. So these things have to be done in order. You cannot jump to step three before step two. And you cannot jump to step two before step one. Yeah. So these yeah. things are in order. The Quran is in Arabic language and you should know a little bit of Arabic. So you should know that there's something called tertib. And this ahraf in the Arabic language has, has functions. It's not, the Quran is not, is not just like this, right? So the first thing is fa'iduhun. Does Allah say any time period? Does Allah say fa'iduhunna okay. usbu'an? Fa'iduhunna shahran? No. Okay. Yeah. Allah says fa'iduhun and he leaves it open, which means you will give advice until you're sure that the advice is not working anymore then you can move into the next step now everyone knows his wife you know your wife you know when when what you're saying doesn't she doesn't care anymore about what you're saying then you move to the step two okay so you abandon sorry so you leave them at home no no Fajiruhunna fil madaji means that you both of you will sleep in the same bed but you're not going to have intercourse with her okay you do hajir of her from a sexual standpoint you're not going to have intercourse with that woman and that can be very psychologically uh, impactful on a woman because the woman then she feels she's not beautiful she's not desired he is literally next to her but he's not even engaging with her okay so it's a form of punishment mm -hmm. as well and that person okay. that person can do sorry yeah go ahead I'm listening okay I'm just explaining to you the verse and then the last thing is it says now this is the part where he want to talk about, right? Yeah. And then Allah says, فَإِنْ أَطَعْنَكُمْ فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ سَبِيلًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيًّا كَبِيرًا And Allah finishes the verse very strongly there. Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيًّا كَبِيرًا Allah is above and almighty. Which means do not think that you do something to the one. If she now obeys and she stops being disobedient, you cannot now, you have to remember that Allah is above you and Allah is stronger than you. Then you stop mm -hmm. as Allah commanded you to stop if she stops being disobedient. Now this idea of yeah. in the Arabic language, Daraba does not mean necessarily what you think, which is a physical, severe physical beating. Okay. Mm -hmm. Daraba in the, in the Arabic language, if you want to research this, Prophet Muhammad Sam told us how to do, uh, sorry, how to do tayammum. You know tayammum? Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. How do you do tayammum? Do you know? Yeah, it's with the, the stone from the, the sea. Yeah, for, from yeah, yeah it's 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 the dust. But how do you do yeah. the tamum? How do you do it? Can you demonstrate how it's done? Exactly like the wudu, right? No, absolutely not. No, no, no it's just the face yeah. and the hands. No, it's just the face and the hand. Yeah. So what you do is that you do like this, yeah. right? You do like this, which is literally like this, and then you would wipe your hand and you will wipe your face. Okay. Okay. So the Prophet Islam says, do daraba in the hadith. So do we beat up the the earth? In the rock, <laughs> or we they simply, or do we simply do like this? Yeah, we simply yeah. do like this. We touch, we touch it. So the word daraba in the Arabic language can have different levels. This is the point I'm trying to make to explain to you, right? So you cannot mm -hmm. take it to the extreme without evidence that it can go to the extreme. Especially when the Prophet Sallallahu explicitly told us darban What is darban in the Arabic language? It's severe hitting, which leaves a mark 
or can break a bone or do severe damage to that woman. So that you're not allowed to do any of that. And Abdullah ibn Abbas was asked, what is darban ghayra mubarrih? He said, bisiwaki wa nahwa. You know what the siwak is? Siwak, it's, it's like the pen. Siwak that they use for their teeth, you know? Uh, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yes, so it's just exactly like this pen. So Abdullah ibn Abbas saying, this is, you hit with something like this. This is what darban ghayra mubarrih means. Okay. So it is, it, is, it is a form of physical discipline that cannot go to the extreme of uh, leaving a mark, breaking a bone, etc., or any of these type of things, right? So the way you put the verse is completely out of context because you have to look at all of these things. First, that it's not about all types of women. It's only about women that are not given the husband his rights, right? And that's an option of something you can do and you cannot do if you don't want to do, okay? So the first yeah. thing is, it's not about all the women. It's about a specific type of women. You have to go through the uh, stages one by one. And number three, that what you call daraba has very big restrictions that you cannot hit the face, cannot leave a mark, cannot break a bone. So it's not physical beating up like the, the non-Muslims do here in the West when they drink alcohol and, and Manchester United loses the, the match, right? <laughs> this is not, yeah, this is not what the Quran is talking about, okay? Also, yeah. Aisha, radiallahu anh, she reported from the Prophet, sallam, she said, the Prophet yeah. sallam, never beat any, any of his wives. Yeah. And, and so this is the best of you, are the ones who are the best to your families. Khairukum, khairukum li ahli. So the best of you are the ones who are best to their families. Uh, and Imam Shafi'i, he said, the best of you are the ones who are never going to hit at all. Yeah. So, so even that last option, you, it's not Allah saying to you, you have to do this. It's an option for some people to do. And Allah has placed restriction. Allah has placed restriction on those men that they cannot go far now and do something extreme. Go ahead. Sorry. But it does leave them the door open to do exactly that. To hit, to to do hit what? women. And to hit women. And just no, no. Again, hit. I don't hit. agree with the, with the term. I would say discipline. I wouldn't use the term hit. Because hit in the English language implies very severe pain. Which this verse does not include. Yeah, I don't know. For example, still, for example, a slap is still a form of physical violence. I mean, a slap you cannot do don't, because don't, the Prophet said don't hit the face. Allows, it's still I'm, I'm allows just answering you. A slap, a slap is not acceptable because the Prophet وسلم, said you cannot hit the face. <laughs> But it's still like it still allows a form of physical violence. Like I don't know. It's not physical like, violence. I feel like uh, listen, you're trying uh, to apply the verse to your own beliefs. Like you say, daraba it doesn't have. It has levels to it. But like it's it's daraba to me. It's like no, it, no. It, uh, it, okay, okay. Mm. Let's understand a few things, right? Everything I said to you right now is in the tafsir. Tafsir al-Tabari, who died 310 AH, who died over 1,100 or 200 years ago, he's saying the same thing I'm saying. So this got nothing to do with my belief. And that time, they did not. there was no feminism. So they're not worried about what they say and that they don't say, right? They were clearly, explicitly saying what the teachings are. They're not lying about anything. So you open Tafsir al-Tabari, you see exactly what I said. Now, the one who said there is restrictions on dar daraba is not me, it's the Prophet, yeah, okay. He said, you cannot do daraba. Dar he said, darban ghayra mubarrih. He said, it's not me, that's a hadith. So it's not me adding as you say it's not me adding an explanation it's the prophet والسلام, explicitly telling you what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do okay. and there comes a point in which yes a man has to use a, a level of physical discipline with his wife what if your wife starts hitting you what if your wife starts becoming abusive herself what if your wife starts cursing you and disrespecting you in every way she perform and allah says it, and allah says in, in the, the next verse said, discipline your woman if they hit you right like you can hit them back if they hit you but it just says you can no 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 I'm, I'm giving you I'm giving you certain situations, right? I'm saying in the end, if nothing is working with the woman, that means she's not looking at you as, as a man anymore. So in for you to apply a form of physical discipline to establish that you are actually being serious about this with the conditions that Islam has put is something that we have no issues with, that we completely believe in as a Muslim. And Allah says in the next verse something very important, that maybe all of this is not going to work. Allah says, so after that, Allah is saying, if you reach that stage and might not work, even if you do some physical discipline, yes, then Allah says what you do. So separation will take place. But the point is, what is rationally wrong with everything that we said? If you compare that to, let me ask you this question now. As someone who's not following a religion, why is it wrong to hit your wife? Tell me. Why is it wrong? Because human rights. Because now I answered you from an Islamic perspective. Now at least get your perspective. It's now. wrong. It's wrong because you're Why? hitting someone physically. Because like so you, what? Have, you have you have no um right over that person's body to says inflict who? pain. Says who? Like says says like uh huh? basic human uh intellect. No, like, that's well, you, that's your intellect. What? what? No, we're no, that's your. No, I, actually, as an atheist, you should believe you're an animal because evolution says that you you uh, I, I evolved from a fish. Atheist. I said uh, I was uh, agnostic. 
Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm arguing from the different perspective now. As someone who's agnostic, should accept what science says. You should believe you were, you were a fish and started working and you have ancestors with a monkey. And that's what atheists believe, right? And therefore, they do believe they're animals. You know, you know, in the West, in scientific community, know, know. you're considered... Okay, so if you want to argue... Yeah, okay, very good. So if you're studying these things, you should know that you cannot say you're not an animal because from that perspective, you are identified to be an animal. So if you are an animal, according to the scientific worldview, then yes, you should behave like an animal. But you still did not give me an answer. Your intellect says... Your intellect says that it's bad, but what if my intellect says it's good? Why do I need to listen to your intellect? Because um, as a society, mm -hmm. we've come this far, we've established that you can't hurt... Some somebody. societies allows it allows you to do it in Africa and different places. No, I don't know. To me, it's like, it's um, pretty obvious you can't hurt somebody else. Like Why, why is it do? obvious? Why is it, why, this is a liberal principle that comes from John Stuart Mill, where he says you can do whatever you want as long as you don't harm anyone else. And you've been influenced by a liberal principle, but why... Why do I need to uh, to adopt a liberal principle? I don't agree with liberalism. Because otherwise society wouldn't survive. Because if you can do whatever you want and I can do, do whatever you know? Want, do then you know? It's all going to. Do I know? Yeah. It? Do you know the level of physical beating that happens here in in the West and societies are surviving? I know. So you are you yeah, saying it's not um, correct? Societies are surviving. Like, yeah, societies are, but like it's not. Um, look at how we're living. It's not very. Um, uh, how do I explain this? I don't know. Like, it's not a very good world to be living in. Do you understand? Like, That's subjective. You have to maybe I'm a, maybe I'm happy with the world I'm living in. Why well, you don't like it? I like it. Well, you don't like it. I like it. Mm, yeah. As a non-Muslim who's able to get, as a non-Muslim who's able to get whatever yeah, he I wants. I feel like you. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, but I feel like you're saying you can't have morals unless you're religious. That's not. I'm true. saying you cannot have objective morals. If you're not, oh, what you can do is oh. you sub subjectively, you can subjectively determine what is right and wrong for you. But what you're trying to do is to enforce your subjective right or wrong on other people. In order for you to enforce your subjective morality on other people, you need to first establish why we need to adopt that as objective morality. And without a creator or God, you cannot do that. Why can we do it with God? Because God is outside us. So we can say that's objective because it's not a subjective opinion from me or from you or from anyone else. But as an atheist or agnostic or anyone who's not religious, who's following a religious scripture, you cannot have what we call objective morality. Therefore, it's not just beating your wife is, is, is the problem. Killing your wife literally or doing more than that is from that point of view, you cannot prove that this is a specific thing which is wrong objectively. You can only th say, I think it's wrong. But someone can say, I don't care what you think. I think it's okay for me. No, no, no. I don't. I feel like the way we've been raised and the way society is living right now is common knowledge that you can't hurt somebody else. As Even I said to you, that's liberalism. Where, where do you live? Do you live in the West? In France? No, I live in I live in North Africa. North Africa. Okay. So in certain parts of the world right now, they've been influenced by a liberal ideology. That liberal ideology says you can do whatever you want as long as you don't harm anyone else. So, okay, let me, let me try to help you now. Is harm the only way where we can say something is wrong? Is harm? If it... Uh, think about it now before you answer, yeah? Think about it. Huh. <laughs> How can you determine right from wrong? Is harm the only factor? No, obviously not. But um... So what else? How do you determine right from wrong as an agnostic person? Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, that's it. If it doesn't hurt anyone else, okay. then it's okay. Right? Okay, have an intercourse with your... Okay, do you have a brother? Oh my God, you're going to talk about incest, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, why is it wrong? <laughs> Tell me. It's you're wrong. using contraception. It's... You're not going to have children. Why is it wrong? It's wrong because you have the same... I don't know, but it's wrong. Okay, okay. From your worldview, it should be okay then. No, it's not. It's not. I why? Know why? Um, exactly. Because... Do you know why? Because God, God determined it to be immoral. That's the only argument that you can bring forward. Without an objective morality... Go ahead. If God... If it's... If it's something God said, that, then why do um, APS societies in the West... Uh, still don't have incest. You see what I mean? But, but these like, societies are don't... influenced. Yeah, these these yeah. societies. You you think that these societies are free from religion? They're not. The, these societies are applying the Ten Commandments of the Judeo Christian laws in their in their laws because they cannot have morality without religion. They have to use religion, even though they're not religious societies. They're using religion for morality. 
They use the Bible for moral uh, certain moral laws. They use it for mm. thou, thou shall not kill, thou sh- shall not steal. Open, open the constitution of these uh, the Americans or the British. You will see they're using mm. the biblical the biblical teachings as their premise because without God, they cannot have objective morality. So it's just proving our point. If religion did not exist, humanity will extend because everyone will do whatever he wants to do and what he thinks is good, even that is killing another person because it's, it can bring me wealth. If I kill another, maybe someone if he does something, it brings me wealth. It brings me women. If I do something to them without their consent, all of these things, people can do these things. And without God giving us objective moral standards, we just do whatever we want to do. And you will not have societies. Yeah, true. Okay. So now coming back, I've answered you. Look, I've done two things. I've answered you from a rational perspective, what Islam explains these things. And number two, I'm giving you that there is no alternative anyways. Yeah. So without a religion, you cannot have an alternative or you cannot make that question anyways. Why is this wrong? Why is that? It's irrelevant questions if you're an atheist or an agnostic because you cannot establish why something is right or wrong to begin with. You need to have a, mm-hmm. a measurement, a standard that is objective that you can prove that we need to follow in order for us to determine whether something is right or wrong. Yeah, Plus, sure. pain pain or suffering can be very beneficial for an individual. <laughs> oh. Can be. For example, you start having a toothache, yeah. a pain, because you have a, a problem you need to fix. So you go to the doctor, it warns you, your body warns you, there's an issue here you need to fix. If you don't fix, you're going to lose your tooth. So you go yeah. to the doctor and then you fix that issue. Perhaps that there are certain medication you're going to be given that are going to give you pain, but they're, because they're helping your body, you are feeling suffering because your body is adapting and your immune system is adapting to the medication that you took. Suffering, I can suffer in order for me to actually appreciate what I get. You know, when you work so hard and yes. then you get something, it's the only time you appreciate it. So suffering and this idea, that all suffering is bad is not correct and just life is about pleasure that's a life with only pleasure is probably a depressing life having certain uh certain struggle and after the struggle you reach eternal happiness that's fine because you already been through the struggle so then going to paradise is good because you already been through struggle so you know the opposite of it but just being in eternal bliss all the time you will not appreciate anything yeah i'm uh, i agree with that actually i don't think uh, if god uh was all merciful like they wouldn't be suffering in the world i don't think that yeah, but i do yeah. think but like I, I still have like God in in like in many verses of the Quran it says pray to me and I will answer you but that's simply not true right because like you can pray and God might answer but it's not always no but but yeah the p- point is this right you're saying for example دعوني استجب لكم for example right exactly إذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعا right these certain verses you're talking about right but you need to take the whole religion together. You cannot take a part without a part. Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah Azza wa Jal will answer your prayer, the prayer of an individual, if he's not hasty. Okay? Allah will answer the dua if you're not ha- So the Prophet ﷺ put a few conditions first. Let's understand. If you ask if you ask Allah for ithm or qati'at rahib, so if you ask Allah for something which is a sin or cutting family ties, Prophet said you're not going to get your answer. Uh, you're, gonna, you're not going to get answered. So not any prayer. Number one, it's not any prayer, right? Number two, you do you make dua and you're certain that Allah can do that thing. If you're not certain that Allah can do that thing, that would be Allah does not answer a dua of a qalbin lahi, a heart which is not there. You're just saying words and you're not even thinking of what you're saying. Okay? Okay. Which a lot of people do. So th- yeah. this is another condition. Now the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah will answer all your dua if you're not in rush. Okay? So you cannot be in rush. Okay, what uh, uh, the Prophet said, being rush means saying, why am I not being uh, getting the answer? Why am I not getting answered? Why am I not getting answered? Which is being in rush, right? And you stop making dua. Yeah. So then the Prophet also, and the scholars, they explain that the dua answered can be in different ways. For example, it can be answered later on. I'm ask Allah for money. And Allah doesn't give me money today because Allah knows it's not good for me to get money today. If I get money today, something bad will happen to me. So Allah gives you money after 10 years, after 20 years. You might, you might ask Allah for a righteous wife. You're 21 and you get married at 28, but that is a righteous wife, right? Yeah. So asking Allah for something does not necessarily, Allah doesn't say I will instantly answer you in the verse. Yes, but that's yes. the assumption of, of certain people. Also scholars yeah. said that Allah can keep that dua for the day of judgment and elevate your status with that dua. Allah can remove some of your sins using that dua. Certain things Allah is not going to give to you because he said to you in the Quran. Maybe you love something is ba- and it is bad for you and you maybe you hate something and it's good for you. And Allah you, knows and you do not know. So maybe Allah will not give you something because he knows that thing is not good for you. So he will stop that thing from you and he will not give it to you, but that's good for you. Okay. So again, it, this, this question is very easily answered when you take the whole Islamic perspective together and not just one verse out of context. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah true. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. Okay. So what else? Um, We're waiting for oh, you to yes. become Muslim now. 
Yes, go ahead. I have like a like, question. We're going to have an Islamic potato today, inshallah. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, about sort of Tauba, like um, mm -hmm. it says, uh, from what I heard from this guy, mm. it says, um, like after the, the war was over and like uh, the Muslims have, have taken uh, Mecca and stuff, uh, it says, like, uh, if you have contracts with uh, disbelievers and mm -hmm. Uh, they are still in Mecca. You can kill them on the spot if um, they are still disbelievers. I think that's what it says. From the, do you know what? No, no, no. You're quoting. You're quoting. You're quoting. Uh, chapter I'm nine. Quoting chapter nine, verse five. Sorry, the Tauba for verse five. That's what you're quoting. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the one. You, yeah, and but like, this is talking about this is talking about a very specific thing that that there was a treaty between the Muslims and, and the non-Muslims, and Allah gave the kuffar a certain period. He said, "You have this period if you don't leave." Then you will be killed if you're found in that place. So Allah mm -hmm. just says first, Baraatun min Allahi wa Rasulihi ila ladina ahdu min al mushrikeen. So there is a ahd. Fasihu fil ardi arbaata ashurid. So Allah gives four months as a period that they can you can stay in the land for that period. But after that, then they will be then you will be killed if you're found in that land because they were already this was a treaty that happened between the, the Muslims and the Kuffar and they broke their treaty. So yeah. even though they broke the treaty, Allah still gave them that period to leave. And if you don't okay. leave, then you will be killed. Mm -hmm. But even if you find someone, wait, wait, but it's not done. It even says, look, This is what you want you to want talk about. The next verse, it yeah. says, okay. it says if you, uh, uh, if one of the, the Mushrikeen, so if you find a disbeliever and he asks for safety, then give him safety and tell him the verses of Allah and then deliver him to a safe place. In the next verse. Mm -hmm. Yep. So why yep. we why why we don't take that part? Why we read one verse and we leave the a part of a verse yeah, and we leave I, the rest? Actually, that one really shocked me because from what I know about the Quran, it's like very peaceful and stuff. And then I watched this video from this guy I told you about, and like that's what yes. The said. problem is the problem is is that when mm -hmm. when we don't really learn our religion very well, and then we go we watch certain people that they just cast out doubts in your heart. You've not studied Islam yourself you do not know the answers to these questions sure. and you start saying okay i'm not a muslim now the quran has this the quran has that and you watch these idiots that they don't know what they're talking about clearly <laughs> because they, they they just yeah look at the quran and just say anything so yeah, the point i want to make to you is the is the following right anything that they will bring there's an answer for yes Mm, right <laughs> yeah answer. anything that they will bring there is an answer for and i don't need to do even research it's very simple you bring the question you'll find the answer to that question because what they're bringing is recycled arguments but unfortunately a lot of muslims have not heard these these arguments now what what is stopping you now from considering yourself a muslim that's my question to you now uh, actually um i just have one last one last question and like, okay about the hijab. what is the hijab okay. mandatory like 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 necessary for women and not for men. Okay. Like I understand the hijab? Like people need to cover up both both genders need to cover up, but I don't understand why is hair attractive or something. Okay. Do you so see what I, mean? I know I understand what you're saying. The reason a woman wears the hijab very simply is because Allah commanded the woman wear the hijab. Now we do we cannot I cannot bring you a, a I say to you that it's because of the man. That's what a lot of people do, mm. which uh, Allah Azza wa Jal does not say in the Quran, wear the hijab because of the man. Allah says, وَقُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ So that the Creator, Allah Azza wa Jal, is speaking to the believing women and is giving them a command to them. Just like He gave the believing men. وَقُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَضُ فُرُوجِهِمْ So Allah gave a command to the believing men, men and no one comes and asks, why should a man lower his gaze? Why should a man grow his beard, right? But these are commands that Allah gives to the believing men and believing because Allah is the all knowledgeable, all wise. Not everything that Allah necessarily will command us, we will have a, an answer for. But we can see wisdoms that these wisdoms can be right and can be wrong. But we can see maybe mm. wisdoms behind the command. A hair is attractive on a woman for a man. The uh, attraction between men and women is not symmetrical. So women would be attracted to certain things in a man that a man is not attracted to in a woman and vice versa. That's yes. why we don't cover up the same way. Because a lot of people are saying, why a man is not wearing the hijab? Because we do not, it is not the same level of attraction between men and women. We attracted to different things. Okay. Allah Azza wa made that command. And because women, they love attention. It's the truth. And women love attention more than men love attention. That's why they wear makeup. That's why they go on social media. That's why they, they dress the way they dress in the cold winter here in, in it, when it's snowing, they're still wearing shorts in the streets. And the reason is, is because of the attention that they would get from the opposite. They're not comfortable wearing high heels where their legs are. They literally change shape because of how much they wear it, right? Okay. But they wear it because they love the attention from the opposite gender. So Actually, Allah can test woman, you. Mm -hmm. As a woman, I don't think what you're saying is true because um, personally, um, I wear what I wear, not because I have attention from anybody else, but because 
like um, for example i'm going to give you a very specific example like you know like uh, people now women go to the gym in leggings and crop tops right yes you know yes. okay yeah of course so, um so yeah at first uh, i was like yeah i want to fit in with this gym i want to wear what they're wearing so i bought the same stuff they're wearing and i started yeah. wearing it and in my mind in my mind i wasn't thinking of attracting anyone or uh, anyone. but do you I know just wanted to fit you in. are i just wanted to you and then, and then i noticed uh -huh. just a second then i noticed like it was attracting someone wanted attention and then it got me thinking like this is why like in Islam, you should cover up because uh, even if you're not meaning to, you're just trying to enjoy yourself and uh, you're just trying to fit in, not necessarily wanting to get attention. Uh, men are still gonna look at you like um, like you are trying to get something. Absolutely, absolutely. What, I mean? what, absolutely, what you're saying makes, uh, this is the truth, right? Look, yeah. Allah created men Allah created women. Allah knows exactly what men are attracted to. So when, because Allah Azza wa says also in the Quran, حَتَّى يُعْرَفْنَا فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ حَتَّى يُعْرَفْنَا فَلَا يُؤْذَيْنَ So Allah says in the Quran that also because they're recognized as believing women, difference between them and the and the and the uh, the, the women that were uh, servants or captives, they were not covered. So that's yeah. the difference between them and them. So they're known as as these women that are Muslim free women. So no one can do anything to them. No one can touch them or try to do something to them. So it's a form of protection yeah. as well. So women look, of course, you will get attention based on what you wear. And there's a lot of experiments on that. They put a woman in New York City for six hours with the, the, the Ibaya. She was not even pr properly covered the Islamic way. But still, they show the difference that people did not mm -hmm. harass her. And the other one, 24 hours, people following her. For, for He followed her for maybe one hour, a guy following her. She keeps yeah. refusing, but he's following her. So Allah knows the nature of a man and a woman. But women do love attention, even if obviously they're not going to say they do. But it's the truth. Every human being loves attention, even men. Every, but, exactly. Every yeah, yeah. Man. But women, but the point is this, is the difference is women do love it more than do men do. And what you mentioned there is very critical because you were trying to compete with other women. And that's what happens a lot with other with not women. Not really compete, but like I didn't want to be the odd one out. I didn't want to be like the weird one. One. but that's the same but that's the same thing but that's the same thing in a way right fitting in or competing with the fitting in or competing with other women this look a lot of women what they do is they want to compete for other with other women but they don't understand that in the end who are you competing for you're competing for the men that would be there looking at you and that is the reason they don't dress that same way when they're in their house they dress very comfortably no makeup on nothing because it's not for them it's for the attention for looking good getting that recognition gives them self-satisfaction it gives them confidence when they yes. feel like they're beautiful and people are praising them so these are wisdoms we can talk about but generally the reason is allah commanded it. allah knows our nature as man and woman and he commands us based on our nature this is good for you be that way and this is good for you be that way yeah. and uh, that's it okay thank you thank you okay thank you so much for no before you go now yeah what about now? Okay, so what is stopping you asking you again? Because you still had the last question and you got the answer, right? Uh, because I still haven't read the, the Quran. I feel like I should know the, the entirety of the Quran before I get myself okay. into this. But so you are born, you're born in a Muslim family, but you've not read the Quran? Yeah, actually, I yeah I haven't read it. I I know some stuff, but like I uh, at one point like um, like I got carried away with the Western mm -hmm. stuff, and I mm -hmm. completely like Islam was completely off my mind for for a certain while, and now like um, since Ramadan like this year, um, I don't know. I feel I I had like this feeling like uh, I should look into it more. So I I started listening to the Quran on the way to school and stuff, and that's it. Like I'm 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 watching your channel. I'm watching many other channels, and I'm watching the base. Like you know Hamza Tursis, he's like uh, he did a very um, a very um, awesome debate with this guy. I forgot his name. I'm trying to learn. You know, so I so when people ask me, I can answer the way you do. And not like be just like okay yeah, yeah that's I fine believe, yeah. that's good to do research yeah. and everything like that but the point is do you believe then the quran is miraculous or from the creator or something that is worth worth following yes, and you believe in I, I, I actually yeah from like what I, uh, from what i know like i i heard about the miracles in the quran like the scientific mm -hmm. miracles you know and like that stuff in my mind i was like a hundred percent this can't be from a human being like this mm -hmm. 
this stuff we just discovered it can't be human uh, uh, minimum yes so that's yes that part is very convincing but then like you know the questions i had like that you just answered that was what, what was keep, keeping me back from completely going mm -hmm. into it like uh, okay so what, what would you consider why don't you consider yourself as a muslim now then if you believe that it's miraculous and then is, what you say reading the quran or doing the research you can do that as a muslim as well it's not something you cannot I do frauds, mm -hmm. because i don't 100 because i don't believe 100 percent. like I okay no problem and, but and but like i still have a, i feel like fraud if i believe without knowing the whole uh, book, you know, I feel like I'm lying, and like if I, if if I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. You want to finish the Qur reading the Quran first before you do it, yeah? Yeah, yeah that's that's it. that's fine. That's fine. Read the rest of the Quran then. But uh, mm -hmm. and any questions, you're welcome to come again and ask the questions. Uh, because as I said, these questions always will have answers. But my advice is to focus on that then and not focus on listening to different people argue with different people. Yeah, I stopped listening to that guy. Like, I feel yeah. like he played my mind. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Though, or anyone like him. Even debates, tried not to engage in, in debates. Even Hamza, he stopped doing debates because he knows that it's not the best way. To, to benefit the Muslim community right now because it's just a way to spread these questions so you don't you get you don't have enough time to answer these questions in the debate and then people get yes. the questions and then they get confused right so yes. uh yeah so ignore even these debates just focus on reading the Quran and understanding and if you got questions then come back inshallah and I Thank think you. that you, inshallah soon you'll be an Islamic potato inshallah there's not, nothing wrong about it inshallah there's nothing Thank to worry about okay no thank problem so inshallah I'll let you go inshallah okay yeah. okay thank so, you goodbye how no do I leave no problem